Happy Thanksgiving 2010 in the year of our Lord to you all. Um, well, I spent uh, quite a few videos uh, going point by point through the uh, book uh, Jesus Interrupted by Bart Ehrman, the part of the book where he talks about the uh, various discrepancies, uh, as he calls them, uh, in the Bible. And uh, tried to offer uh, an alternative uh, way to understand those verses uh, that would not be contradictory. Uh, now, many of these passages, well, I think there was at least two uh, that I can recall right offhand, were not even apparent contradictions or even discrepancies at all. Uh, we had uh, two different authors saying uh, the same thing using uh, more or less uh, similar or even perhaps the same words. Uh, now, uh, some of them, though, uh, were more problematic than others. Uh, for example, uh, Judas, uh, did he hang himself? Did he fall headlong with his uh, guts bursting out? Um, that is a bit more difficult to explain than um, Luke saying that Paul went three times to Jerusalem or to Athens and, and Paul saying that he went at least twice. Uh, and Ehrman does admit that uh, some of these are uh, not necessarily uh, irreconcilable uh, contradictions, uh, but uh, some of them are very difficult, uh, and he would say impossible, to reconcile. So what I suggested for some of the verses uh, may have seemed less plausible than what I suggested for others. And uh, again, I'm not saying that every suggestion that I made uh, is the answer of what is going on there. But uh, what is the point of, of going through this? Uh, as you noticed, uh, I did not, uh, if you watch the other videos, uh, I did not really uh, set forth a case for inerrancy, but assumed it. Um, and I think that that is a, a common assumption amongst uh, evangelical uh, Christians, um, though... Uh, a lot of other people that aren't evangelicals uh, would uh, dispute that. I believe the Roman Catholic Church, for example, I think, uh, believes that the Bible is infallible with respect to, or inerrant with respect to faith and practice, uh, but uh, not necessarily matters of history and science. Um, so it, it, it is a controversial uh, doctrine. Uh, it, it is... Uh, the more, uh, the the longer the list becomes of alleged contradictions, uh, the more difficult uh, it is to maintain uh, that uh, the Bible is inerrant. Uh, so, the point uh, I guess that I was kind of trying to make, without uh, really saying so explicitly, uh, is not that uh, uh, the Bible is inerrant, uh, although I do. Uh, except that it is inerrant. Once that term is properly understood, there's a lot of misunderstanding about it. Um, so I, I do accept the inerrancy of the Bible, the infallibility of the Bible, uh, but I didn't really argue for that. And uh, in, in a sense, I don't really care uh, if you accept that the Bible is inerrant or not. Uh, but uh, what I do care uh, to have, uh, and, and hopefully did accomplish, uh, in showing uh, was that if this list of airmen's was taken as irreconcilable contradictions, uh, it, it really leaves a lot to be desired. Uh, and I think that uh, uh, the Bible has shown itself, uh, even if one has a hard time accepting it as being inerrant, uh, it, it should not be difficult, uh, although it probably is, uh, but it should not be difficult for one to accept 
that it is generally uh, reliable uh, when it comes to uh, what it says happened in the past. Um, we have found uh, various coins, various cities. Uh, uh, there's an inscription about the house of David. Uh, so uh, there's mention of David outside the Bible, uh, King David, and uh, mention of Jesus outside the Gospels. Um, so uh, I think we can be confident at the very least uh, that it is generally reliable in at least some of what it says. Um, and I think that if you will grant that, um, then that is enough for having a uh, strong uh, biblical Christian faith uh, that uh, you don't have to go all the way to inerrancy necessarily uh, to uh, be a Christian. Uh, you can uh, look at the eyewitness testimonies about the resurrection of Jesus, uh, the creed in 1 Corinthians 15, and so on. And uh, uh, that from, from that alone, uh, you, you can know that the basic story of, of Jesus is correct. Now, uh, some of the secondary details, uh, like exactly where Jesus grew up, uh, the exact order of going from one place to another, uh, those are... Uh, uh, well, secondary details. Um, so, I I in a sense, uh, they're really not that important. Um, if we had Luke uh, saying that uh, Jesus uh, uh, did not uh, uh, die for our sins and Paul saying that he did, uh, that would be a significant difference. Um, but uh, where Paul was at what time, uh, that really isn't that significant. Uh, so, we, we have uh, Ehrman uh, saying that, uh, you know, he was a uh, good conservative uh, Protestant, uh, went to Moody Bible Institute where the Bible is, the, uh, you know, our middle name, and everything was going good, but then he goes to Princeton Seminary, and uh, he totally... totally you know, found these discrepancies and, and totally lost all faith. Well, no, that's not quite what he says. Uh, what he says was he went to Princeton, and that's when he lost faith in the inerrancy of the Bible. Uh, so he wasn't a full-blown agnostic at this point. Uh, he was, uh, you know, maybe Mark did make a mistake. He, one of his professors wrote on one of his papers, and that got him thinking. Uh, and it wasn't until later... Uh, when he started thinking about the problem of evil, uh, when he lost his faith. And he says, in Jesus Interrupted, uh, that one uh, does not have to uh, follow the scholarship presented therein uh, into agnosticism. That, uh, discrepancies in the Bible should not uh, lead to one losing their faith. Uh, but in his case, uh, that was, uh, it seems, a step in the uh, in that direction, uh, if he did not first uh, lose faith in the credibility of the Bible, uh, then perhaps uh, he would not have found the problem of evil uh, as uh, insurmountable as he did. Uh, it would still be a problem, but perhaps not as big of a problem for him uh, if he knew that uh, on other grounds, independent grounds, that. Uh, Everything the Bible says is 100% uh, trustworthy. Um, so I, I think it is related to uh, his uh, loss of faith um, that these discrepancies that are there. But uh, as we went through them, uh, we saw that really uh, th there's very little there of, of substance. Uh, I mean, uh, some of them are discrepancies at all. Uh, some of them are, you know, minor discrepancies of secondary details. Uh, we, we know that Judas died. The exact manner in which he died uh, is perhaps not uh, uh, terribly uh, important uh, for our practical uh, Christian living today. Um, that he died is, is something that uh, everybody agrees on uh, within the New Testament. Uh, 
so I think uh, that uh, the the picture uh, that he seems to want us to infer from what he's saying is, uh, and I think he denies that this is what he's trying to do, but but it seems like this is what he's trying to do. Um, what like the Jesus interrupted? Well, uh, I'm just uh, pointing out uh, interesting tidbits. Uh, so you'll read my book. Well, the the the, the fact is that uh, the impression, uh, just from from reading the title, is that we cannot trust what the that what the Bible says now is what it said uh, originally, uh, that it's been changed. Uh, but that's not really what what he's saying. But that seems to be what he wants us to to infer him to be implying. Uh, so with Jesus interrupted. Uh, Again, with, with the title, the the discrepancies, errors, and contradictions in the Bible, and, and uh, it, it seems that uh, the idea that we're supposed to come away with is, uh, while the Bible is hopelessly riddled uh, with contradictions uh, of major importance, uh, and therefore we can't really uh, believe the Bible, and and we can't really trust it, and and we really don't have good grounds for for our faith. Now, now. He, he does deny that that's what he's saying, um, but uh, that is an impression that it would be easy for somebody to come away with, uh, I think, if they did not take the time to go through point by point these uh, uh, discrepancies. Um, so uh, if we bracket out the problem of evil um, and the first book, uh, you know, Misquoting Jesus, uh, there really isn't anything here uh, of substance in the discrepancies that I went through uh, to really cause us uh, really much trouble at all uh, with our faith uh, if we do in fact believe or if we're considering belief uh, this should not really stand in the way. Uh, it, it is a uh, minor problem for the particular view of inerrancy at best uh, but it does not prove, disprove the general reliability of the Bible as, as a historical work, and uh, the uh, main theological points it's making uh, are not really affected by this, uh, even if these are full-blown contradictions. And Ehrman himself admits that they're not all full-blown contradictions. Some of them are just uh, differences of wording. So uh, it, it's the classic... Uh, modus oper operandi that he's always using of over-exaggerating, uh, uh, taking a molehill and making it into a mountain. Um, uh, yes, it, it, uh, it does seem that uh, Luke uh, did not know that Judas hanged himself, uh, that he said that Judas died in some other way than by hanging himself and committing suicide. Uh, but so what? Uh, <laughs> it's not that big a deal. Um, yeah, so uh, if Ehrman is trying to get us to, to get that impression, uh, then it's not, uh, we should not take that seriously. Uh, so I think uh, uh, whether you believe in inerrancy or not, uh, whether you found my explanations convincing or not, are plausible or not? I, I think they were more more or less plausible, uh, some more plausible than others. But uh, yeah, the Bible still remains as a valuable source of information uh, about God, about Jesus, and we can trust what it says uh, for the most part, at the very least, even if we don't accept it as being infallible and inerrant. Uh, and we should not uh, really change our picture of Jesus. Remember, it's called Jesus Interrupted, so uh, there's really nothing uh, substantial about Jesus that we have to change. Uh, maybe certain things he said or the order in which he did certain things uh, might have to be tweaked, uh, but the basic facts of, you know, he came, he was baptized by John, uh, he preached for a while and he was crucified, uh, prophet and so on and so forth, uh, is still in, left intact. So we're, we're not really interrupted, uh, I think, uh, by this book.